choppy. They came out and I was waiting for run, run, pass. Nope. They decided to start with a pass and it went right to Brandon Cooks. It's almost like they listen to the show. I don't know. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I'm told they do. I'm told it's piped in. Jerry's got it on in his office. McCarthy's got it on his office. Hopefully this week without Bobby. He definitely has it on. He can listen to us, you know, shower him with kisses. But, uh... We didn't, we didn't tell him happy birthday on Friday. So no, we didn't. That was, that was Mike mistake. gave a little attitude. He was a little bit surly to start because we forgot his 60th birthday. We did. We did. Uh, you know, didn't didn't look at the Wikipedia before the show. Yeah. Uh, that was, that's our fault. It's our mistake. <laughs> but uh, this was this. That first play to Cooks, you could tell like they had that it had to have. They had to have heard all the talking points. Yeah, that was a week. force feed. Force feed. It was. And Mike. You know, wanted to dismiss it and, oh, what do you guys want to say? Look at C.D. Lamb. Look at Ferguson. No, Brandon Cook's not getting the football. Uh, has never happened in his NFL career, and it was a problem. And yesterday, they clearly made it an emphasis. Brandon Cooks, with eight more yards receiving yesterday than he had for the entire season coming into the game. Are you kidding me? First half, seven for 104 and a touchdown. He ended up with nine for 173, they got him going. He gets in the end zone as well. And after the game, Mike McCarthy was asked about the difference with BC getting all the touches. Oh, I just think you know his his opportunities came to, to oh. you know, came together. So um, <laughs> I, I think you know the protection part of it. You know we're, we're getting to where we need to be. Uh, we still have work to do there. You know going off of last week, and then you know we definitely took a step this week. And I think just with that, we're able to you know, get into the play types that we want to live in. So, and, and I think you're seeing more of that here the last couple of weeks. So Mike is trying to say, well, more protection, more time for the progression, and Dak can get to another receiver in the routes. I'm not totally buying that. Dak Prescott on the Cooks explosion. Practice, man. I mean, y'all know me. I always talk about practice, what we put into it, going back to this game plan, going back to early in the week. I told him, you know, say let, let's put the work in, and it's going it's going to come out. I mean, he's he's been there for us all, all year when we've needed him too. There's been games that we've come back and said, oh, could you get him more involved? And yeah, sure, maybe so, right? He's that type of player that that deserves those questions when he's not getting those targets or getting those catches. And then, little communication that we had throughout uh, this week, and then he had a great week of practice. Some plays where you know built and meant up to go for him. And then the others, he just, he went and won. When they would double CD, they would do this or that. He went and beat his man and uh, made it easy for me to throw. There it is, Choppy. We wanted it. We got it. Brandon Cooks finally with a breakout. And that's what we envisioned when they stole him for, we mm -hmm. thought stole him, traded a fifth round pick for him. Get 170 something yards out of him. That may be nice. Thought really that was the, uh, that was the key. Uh, they got him. They haven't used him appropriately at all. They've ignored him at times, but in this game, they force-fed him, and maybe it's because the Giants' secondary is that bad. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, when they face a better team, you know, be it Seattle or Philadelphia again or Buffalo, Miami, Detroit, you know, does, if he has another game like this, I mean, they're going to be tough to beat. If he's going to put up CD Lamb-type numbers, I mean, they're going to be impossible to beat. Let's yeah. just be fair about that one. Uh, star up to a play that is, I don't think it's utilized enough in this game. This is the TD to Jake Ferguson. Second and goal at the one. Straight eye, play fake. Little flip to the left side of the end zone. Touchdown to Ferguson, who's got a little cha-cha move in him. I don't think uh, that they use play action at the one-yard line enough. Not not just the Cowboys. I mean, just teams in the NFL in general. Uh, they get very, very... They, they, they kind of clog everything up there. They try to run it right in your face. And that was a, a perfect play there. Play action... Go to the left. Like, that was a perfect play. I don't think teams use that enough. I don't think this team uses it enough in general. The whole league, I don't think, does. Uh, I love the play action down there at the one-yard line. I think it's very, very difficult to stop that. And that quarter quarterback rollout hit the tight end. Those are the two plays at the goal line that I think you could pass on every single time, and they did it there. Goal-to-go -go situation as well. Red zone, you just try to check them all off with this team after they initially failed with the goal to go from the two. That was bad. On the first drive. That was bad. Not a single Dak run. Not a single Dak run in that series right there where they had goal to go inside the, the five-yard line. They had a run, a run. They had a, they, I think Dak was high to, Fergus, uh, high to Ferguson there, and then another run. 
I, I, you didn't run Dak a single time? I mean, isn't that what he's great at? Well, you should be able to score from the two, yep. like, without having to have the quarterback run it in. Olsen blamed Terrence Steele yep, for the fourth down play mm -hmm. where the collapse took place. And that leads me to my next star up. I think that Tony Pollard has been TP'd. It's first and goal inside handoff. Dowdle pushing. That one's in. That's a touchdown for Rico Dowdle. Get Rico the football. 12 for 79, 6.6 .6 a carry. I was not happy early on that they went away from him. Nick Eatman tweeted out the exact same thing. He goes, um, is there something wrong here with 12 yards per carry with the average? Not sure what's going on. They gave it to Rico early, and then they go away from him. They don't give him the goal-to-go carry. Mm. They don't give him that, that workload down there, banging amongst the fellas at the line of scrimmage. And Tony Pollard has now turned into Zeke with the fan base, and Rico Dow is the new Tony Pollard. We want Rico to get the touches. And Pollard here and there, just like we wanted Pollard to get the touches yeah. and Zeke here and there, goal line or third and one, except that's not Tony Pollard's forte. But Rico Dowdle is the new fan favorite. Right, he is. And then Rico will be the guy that you overpay in a couple of years. Hopefully not. And he's going to be the next hated one. And everybody's going to love the free, cheap, young running back. That And look, they, they, they never should have paid him. They never should have paid Tony Pollard. Never should have franchised him. They should have just sat there and let him walk and bring up the next guy. Bring him up. Could have been Malik Davis. Could have been Rico. Whoever they drafted would have been deuced to the situation. That's what they should have won. Uh, that's what they should have done. And they didn't. They paid him. And now he's hated. So congrats. <laughs> you know, they never learn. They never learn. They <laughs> never learn. I thought that we thought they learned with DeMarco that they, they let him walk. And Darren McFadden comes in and gets four six to carry. With a bad quarterback. And they draft Zeke. Oh, no, they didn't learn there. They drafted somebody four. Then they paid him again. God. This was a franchise record, by the way. Six different players scored a touchdown. Six that good? different Cowboys scored a touchdown. And this 50% stat is insane. And Bobby, Bobby just reading off his lower back tattoo with all the Dak stats to tweet out after the game. This is the 12th time in Dak's last 24 home starts. That they've scored at least 40. What? 12 out of the last 24 times the Cowboys have scored 40 or more when Dak is playing. And Dak Prescott once again did it with the legs. Third and nine. Empty gun for Prescott. Back looking. Standing. Running up out of the pocket. Running to the five. Walking the dog. Touchdown Prescott. With 16 seconds left in the half. Brad Sham with the call right here on the fan. Dak's legs have clicked to the perfect degree. This is Russell Wilson knowing exactly when to run in Seattle. Um, this is, you know, Jalen Hurts with that back-breaking third-down type run to absolutely kill you. Early on, before the CeeDee Lamb rushing touchdown on that same drive, it was third and six, Dak legs. Uh, he had the sideline touch throw to CD down the right sideline or the lower Sideline, left to right on your radio dial. Uh, Dak was on the move and running. And there you are with him running for the touchdown. It's something has clicked. And he is in a perfect decision rhythm in terms of knowing when and how to run the football. And Dak, it seemed like a lot more. Two for 17 yards. That's it. Two carries, 17 yeah. yards. He's just doing it at the exact right time, RJ. There's no hesitation. There's no third giddy up in terms of decide, should I throw this? Should I throw it out of bounds? Dak Prescott using his legs has been, in my opinion, the difference in the offense. I, I, I don't know how it's not. I mean, even though it was only two times, huge plays, you get them both. Um, and, and then, listen, Dak doesn't have to run as much as Cam Newton used to or Lamar Jackson does now. Uh, pick up third downs. Pick up key third downs. That's how Russ did it. That's And look, Russ's game has fallen uh, on hard times because he doesn't run anymore. Dak's game fell on harder times because he didn't run. And now that he's running again, it's such a... you know, a backbreaker. It is. It really is. And, you know, and, and you know, people will talk about how, you know, if you run, you're not a quarterback. You know, but he's not in here today this week. Bobby's not in this week. Hmm. Uh, no, that's what you have to be. That's part of the job. 
You're not just a drop back passer anymore. Those days are gone. Patrick Mahomes is not who he is if he doesn't run at all. Be it, and I don't mean run beyond the line of scrimmage, just move around. I mean, how many of his passes are rollouts or him flush of the pocket, stay avoiding trouble? And then he will run on you. Like, none of these quarterbacks are who they are, except for maybe Joe Burrow. Joe's like the only one that's just a pure, simple, elite drop back passer. Who's that elite? My other star ups here on Sean and RJ and star up, star down brought to you by the Big Green Egg. I was talking with my guys at Panther City about the Big Green Egg Uh the other day. Jonathan Hankins, fourth and two stop. After the Dak interception in the second quarter, the Giants going for it. Hankins with the fourth and two stop. Gallimore had a third down sack. He had another sack later on, which we'll get to in star down. Uh, Fowler sack. Tank Lawrence in the third sack. Dorrance Armstrong, at one point in this game, Tommy DeVito, 26 dropbacks, five sacks, 17 pressures. The Giants started 0 for 5 on third down. The first down disparity was 14 to 1 Mm. early on. Just putrid. Putrid football team. Uh, But those are some of the Cowboys' D linemen, uh, stat padding. And then uh, Gallimore uh, tried to throw out a kick where the New York Giant needed a pad right there in the nuts. Yeah. They wear cups. They should wear cups. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming that they do. I assume some do. I assume some don't. You know, they can be tough to run with. Uh, but you, I think you would want to wear a cup. I don't know. I don't know if a quarterback wants to wear one or not. You get hit there. Oh, that stinks. Anyone else for star up, star down? Uh, I've got some star downs. Um, but I got to give a start to Michael Gallup. Uh, this is the kind of game I think you want from him, right? Two catches, 70 yards, and an absolute bomb, which is what he's supposed to be. First and 10 at the Giants, 41. Snap to Prescott. Well protected, deep down the right side. Gallup in the end zone. He caught it. Touchdown to Michael Gallup. What a throw and what a catch. 41 yards. That was, that was a great throw by Dak. Right there, dropped perfectly. Yes. Uh, but that, you know, we, we haven't seen him go just downfield like that. Uh, that's his game. That's what everybody says his game was or wants it to be. And maybe it wasn't a fit with this offense, uh, the way the offense had been going the first couple of weeks. And he obviously can't cut on that leg. Uh, so maybe him just on straight go routes is the way to go. Uh, but two catches for 70 yards. I just got a game you want from him. You want big plays. You don't need him to be a possession receiver. Yeah. You need big plays out of him. All right. Tolos, hitting us up for Star Up, Star Down on the truckwreck.com text line. I think you would obviously go with the three stars of the game with Dak, Lamb, and Cooks. Pepe, what else are the Tolos saying? You know, you got a couple for Schoonmaker. Schoonmaker, you know, he's, he's falling down the depth chart. Uh, Jake uh, Cavender has taken over. Uh, star Up, Dak, Star Up to CeeDee Lamb, the whole wide receiver course. So a lot of Star Ups here, but...